What up? I'm DJ LX Star. You're watching Toxic TV. City's great, man. Um, a lot of history comes out of Philly, from the cracking of the Liberty Bell, man, to uh, you know um, the people who've come out of it, you know, and the struggles that they've overcome to become who they are. You know what I'm saying? From Patty the Bell to Bill Cosby, you know, and so on. You know, um, Philadelphia. Philadelphia has produced and you know brought you some of the best music to ever hit. You know, particularly soul music. You know, no one no one does it better than us. It doesn't matter. No one does it better than us. For our generation now, we got, you know, greats from out of there. You got uh um, you got uh people like um Reed Dollars, Gilly the Kid, um AR Ab, um Dark Low, the whole OBH movement, Lip Moss, uh you got uh people um the the legends Will Smith, Jazzy Jeff, you know what I'm saying? Um, three times dope, cool C. You know, a lot of people you know, come came from out of Philly and made names for themselves. So. I'm from Southwest Philly. Um, if you know anything about Southwest Philly, Southwest Philly, you know, it can be a hard place to live in, you know, but it's good living, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's, it's hard at the same time, you know. It's one of those places to where, you know, it's either gonna make or break you. You're either going to rise or you're going to fall. That's Philly. You know, that the whole motto of Philly is only the strong survive. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Philadelphia can be crazy, man. <laughs> you know, but, you know, like I said, it's one of those places that'll make or break you, man. DJing was always around. Um, DJing started when, for me, when I was a kid, I grew up watching my Uncle Keith. Um, he was uh, the, the premier DJ in Philly. Everybody knew him. You know what I'm saying? If you, you know, were back then, you were into the music scene, the party scene, he was that dude. You know, they go to the plateau. Um, the place called the plateau was where everybody go. You know, they would go out there, set turntables up, you know, and rock. You know, I wasn't around for those scenes. I was too young. I was you know, a baby still. You know what I'm saying? But as I got older, he was always the one who you would hire, you know, to do the party, the Christmas party, or the Halloween party, or whatever, you know, and he was real good at what he did. Um, I would sit there and watch him scratch for hours, you know, to sit there and watch, you know, it was the first time I've ever seen jibba, 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 um, him do, you know, the cutting and scratching, uh, first time I've ever seen techniques, you know, I would sit there and watch him, you know, like I said, it's for hours, man, just watch, just watch, and I never thought in a million years that I would be doing it myself. It was just really, really interesting and awesome to see, you know, him do that, you know, and the way he did it, it was just awesome, you know, to see something like that. My cousin Reg. My cousin Reg pretty much was a person who pretty much uh, 
got me focused on hip hop and made me want to be a part of it. He was a DJ as well. He um came to live with us. I never forget. He came to live with us. He moved in with us. You know, my mom. You know, my brothers and I. You know, we were all close. You know, what I'm saying our whole family's close. You no, know, whole family was always close. But when he moved in, he had techniques. So you know, my face lit up like a light bulb. Like, oh shit. We got it in the house now, <laughs> you know. So you know, and you know when he wasn't around, you know, I would jump or try to chip it, chip it, chip it. You know, broke a couple of needles here and there. He come in, all bitch and tripping. Yo, what the fuck were you doing on my table? You know? But you know, yeah. And um, he was a part of a rap group. The rap group they were part of was called um, Grand Demolition. Um, and they were they were doing it, man. They were going all over the place rapping. They did the Apollo, all types of things. And I would see their little photo pictures and everything. And I was like, you know, damn, I, I want to be a part of that, you know, the hip hop scene. But even still, you know, wanting to be a part of it, I didn't take it serious. It was one of those things to say, hey, I want to do that too. But it's cool, you know, girls are liking them. And, you know, they can rap, you know, it's dope. I want to do that too. Um, his partner, um, he was his name was DJ Grand Jock. And his partner was Jock D, um, Darren from West Philly. And um, you know, for for that era, they were dope. You know what I'm saying? They were on their way. Um, uh, I got into hip hop when we uh, moved to Carolina. Philly was just getting crazy. You know, my my oldest brother had been you know sent to uh, prison you know, for life. You know, he was you know in real big into the drugs, you know what I'm saying, hustle, he was, there was nobody like him, smooth dude, you know what I'm saying, I actually plan on doing a documentary about him, you know, so that's a whole nother story, we'll, we'll get into that, um, when I got to South Carolina, you know, I was still in love with music, it was just my thing, I never forget, my mom had bought us a record player, it wasn't, a, you know, like, chip chip return to it, it was just a regular record player, but I was scratching the hell out of records, man, I fucked a lot of records up, <laughs> I did. I fucked a lot of records up. My hip hop stuff took a turn when I started messing around the streets. You know, doing the hip hop and everything was good and everything, but you needed money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, a friend of a friend, you know, plugged me in to some Dominicans. I will never speak their names, but you know, you know, I just know that they was always riding around in hot cars and. I always had a pocket full of money, and I wanted that too. So, you know, I got into the drug game. Um, my drug of choice was cocaine, weed, and heroin. You know, we was we was just some young dudes out there, you know, trying to make a buck. And it ended up turning into something, and it got me sidetracked from the music for a while. You know, I'm like, I'm a shorty, and I'm breaking out with you know, a BMW. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, um the uh, three series and I'm like you know yeah you know I'm driving to school <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> with a car you know what I mean so it's like yo you know that's where the focus was at you know jewelry a pocket full of money and it felt good we didn't understand the road of destruction that we were walking down you know but you know things came to a head it really did it was a Friday um, afternoon and we were out grinding and hustling some projects. You know what I'm saying? Um, we were in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. Cops rolled up on us, had us on the wall, patted us down. I knew it was over because I had a big bomb of cocaine on me in my pocket and my sock. And I had a gun, had a 380 in the front of my pants. They patted us down and my heart is beating like a, like a billion beats per second, man. And then he said, they're clean. Let them go. It was nuts because we were all dirty. It was like, okay, how the hell did that happen? You know, we jump in the car, immediately we roll out. Mm, we're feeling invincible. You know, I'm in the back seat, quiet. Everybody's, you know, it's, you know, yeah, 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 we got away with this, we got away with that. But I'm in the back seat, like, you know, something's wrong. Like, that just, it doesn't happen like that. Like, you know, it never happens like that. Like, something's wrong. You know, I can see maybe one of us, but all five of us, you know, it's like something's wrong here. Oh, stop talking like that. You know, you're talking negative. Don't talk negative, you know. And the whole way back, you know, whole ride back home, I'm just, like, feeling some ill in the veins, man. I'm like, something wrong, you know. But anyway, we get back, and uh, 
we um I never forget we walk to the house, sun is down by that time, walk in. My dude Tun is sitting down on the sofa, I throw him a bag of weed, you know, I turn around, turn the video game on. When I turn back around, there's these four dudes standing in, in the doorway with big submachine guns. And I'm like, you know, I'm thinking it's some dude that's fucking around with us that we know. So I'll walk up to actually go slap the dude. And then when I walk closer, I stop and look at his side like, oh shit, I don't know if this shit's for real right here. So they end up, you know, coming into the crib. It was back. We had some females in the crib. One had a son there. People got hurt. Um, it was really bad, man. Um, and I remember hearing one of them say, him, get him. And I'm like, shit, these dudes know me. At that time, you know, I was doing a lot of things in the street. You know, I know a lot of people look at DJs like they some soft dude. Believe me, I'm not no soft dude. <laughs> Trust me. Believe me, the, the, the streets talk, the streets tell you quickly, you know what I'm saying? My 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 reputation is solidified in the streets. But you know, I remember laying back there and uh the dude had his gun to my back and the other guy's pointing the gun at my face and he tells me If you don't give me the shit, I'ma kill you. If you give me the bricks, I'ma kill you. And Right then at that moment, I started saying prayer to myself. I'm like, you know, as I'm listening to their voices, I began to piece together who they were. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, these dudes, some real live killers. I'm like, yo, it's over. You know what I'm saying? We played hard. We played hard in the street. And this is what comes with it. You know what I'm saying? And at that moment, I just knew, you know, it was over right then. Until, you know, it's a knock on the door. It was my man, E. Moy, you know, who's my dude to this very day. I love him to death. It's my dude. And when he opened the door and saw everybody, you know, he slammed the door and ran. You know, first he tried to get me to open the door. I wasn't gonna open the door. I just wasn't gonna do it. And he slammed the door and he ran and they chased after him. They all ran out and that's how we got away that day. And I always look back on it and I always say, you know, that was God, man. It was nothing that we did. It was God's way of saying, you know, stop doing the stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? You're being stupid right now throwing your life away i could have easily took you just now but it wasn't your time but i could have took you just now so you know um and that's when i, I got out the game and that was my that was my turning point um of slowly getting out of the game anyway i should say <laughs> but eventually i left the game a lot of friends dropped around us you know a lot of people was getting murdered man right and left you know it was time to leave the game you know my um my dude mayhem, you know what I'm saying, rest in peace, love and death, you know what I'm saying? Um, my dude, uh, you know, just a lot of people, man. I'm not even gonna go down with mentioning names and bring that back, but we lost a lot of people. We had a lot of people sitting in jail, taking a lot of people as well. And yeah, man, that that came my turning point, you know, along with a couple other incidents, you know, but that was that was the turning point. When I first, when I got deep into hip hop, it was actually through rapping and emceeing. Um, we had a group called Third Dimension, which consisted of me, my brother, and my man Chris. And what we did was we had two radios. One had um, the uh, external mic. That's what you would rap into. The other one is when you played the music through. So you were standing between, so the sound would pick up really good and catch your voice and the music evenly. <laughs> and that's what we did. I was the freestyle artist because we didn't write. We didn't know anything about bars or anything. We just, you know, rap, you know, just rap. And, you know, and we got a name for it. And, um, you know, as time went on, you know, we started getting more into the hip hop thing. You know, at school, somebody started beating on the table and you started rhyming. Then you got into battle rapping. And, um, yeah, you know, a lot of people got embarrassed. And I embarrassed a lot of them. <laughs> this is a, a vulture with that rapping thing, man. But, you know, y'all will get to hear that. <laughs> so on, on some projects we got coming up. I remember sitting home and um, I was watching uh, the hip hop show. I'm watching it. You know, and they had a throwback. It was a throwback Thursday. Um, I mean, excuse me, throwback Friday. And uh, I remember they played uh, this video by... Uh, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. It was brand new funk. 
and there was a solo part where Jazzy Jeff was just, just destroying the turntables. Um, he was just just kicking it. Yo, yo, Jeff, rock the beat. Chop, 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 chop. Yo, Jeff, it was, it was phenomenal. And I'm watching this, and it was like, wow, damn, that's dope. Right after that, they played um, Arab and Rakim, the I Ain't No Joke video. And they had the camera close up on Eric B's hand while he's DJing, scratching on the turntable and the other hand is on the fader. And I'm watching this and I'm like, so that's how it's done. And immediately ran to Duck House. And I'm like, you know, I need to do the turntables. So I'm in his room like DJing for hours. He's trying to get me out of his damn house. And I'm like, nah, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I end up moving to Merrill. When I moved to Maryland, I'm kicking in Maryland. I'm right next door to Virginia. I'm right next door to DC. Uh, DC is is has its own music scene, you know, the go-go and thing. But they're also very, very embedded in hip hop as well, you know, which all of that branches off and derives from hip hop. All of it does. And they're very critical about music. So you gotta really know your shit, man. When you come out to DC, do some music. You really you gotta be on your shit, man. Um, you got legends from there as well. You got Wale's from there. You got Fat Trail from there. You got Tabby Bonet. You got the committee. You got a lot of dudes coming out of DC from the old school, like Nonchalant. Um, came from out of there. A lot of people come from out of DC and Maryland, VA, Northern Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Um, Virginia period. You got Mad Skills is from VA. You know what I'm saying? The Clips, Chris Brown. A lot of people came from out of those areas. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know. I was, again, inspired by the DJing again. By that time, I'm battle rapping. I'm doing things. We just came off the, the messed up record deal. Um, and I remember when I met Flex and Rain at WPGC radio station, um, the Washington, D.C., Maryland. And I'm looking at him on a, on, a, on a mic. He's doing his thing. Though I'm getting ready to battle somebody up there, you know what I'm saying? I'm still looking at what he's doing. I'm like, damn, this is this is like dope. This is what I want to do right here. Like, this is dope. He's in the radio station. He's interviewing rappers and all these things he's doing, going to the clubs and all that. And that was cool to me. Same thing with Rain. She's she's dope on the mic. You know, she's doing interviews and she, you know, it was just great. I mean, they had the DJ up in there, um, Quicksilver. Quicksilver and DJ Alize, dope DJs. I'm looking at them on the ones and twos. And I'm like, damn, you know, these dudes are dope. This is what I'm gonna do. Even though at that time I'm like about to jump on a mic and battle the dude, I'm sitting here looking at the, the DJs and what they're doing, though. Know, but you know, and um, yeah, but still, you know, didn't take it super serious. But you know, was getting there. It wasn't until one day my lady and I, you know, we were sitting back one day, and we doing it, just started business. So I'm like, yo, you should. I'll be dope. We're looking at something to see if we what it was. But the DJ is like, yo, let's do that. I'm like, you know, all right, cool. Let's do it. And it was literally decided right then in one second. Let's do it. So we jumped on the Craigslist. We found somebody on there selling um, some CDJs. Uh, Mind you, this is our first time we even jumping into the field. So you know, we don't know where to We just jumped in it. We just jumped. You know, sometimes you just got to jump. We went and we, our first one was a, the Newmark NDX. And I used them and I remember we landed our first job, you know. And uh, a lady gave us a shot, you know, to do her, uh, her birthday party. So we came out, and it was pretty big too. So they had a big, gigantic house, had a lot of people there. So I'm I'm, I'm excited, I'm ecstatic. We get the little deposit check. It's like, oh, we got to check it out. We get money, we doing this now. And I got there and I was nervous as shit, <laughs> you know. You know, it was my first time. I'm like, what if I make a mistake? A lot of emotions are going through you. What if I make a mistake? What if this don't come up right? What if they don't like my play selection? You know, but then I, I just reached back and I remember my uncle, you know, doing his DJ thing. My cousin Reg, it was never, for them, it was never about uh somebody not liking the set or making a mistake. It was just, you know, play the music, man. You know, play the music. Just, just get up there and play the music. And that's what I did. Everything went the way that it was supposed to. And it was great. Um, yeah, it was great, man. It just went from there, man. And boom, exploded. Before you know it, we're DJing everywhere. We're on the road, you know. And yeah, it was dope, man.
my favorite part about DJing, uh, traveling. I like going different places. You know, you feel like a rock star, like you're on the road, we're packing up, we're going on the road, you know, it's it's it's, it's a phenomenal feeling, man. Um, to go to other cities and other states and share your skill and your 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 taste for music with everybody else and you know, share your style of spinning that music with everybody else, you know, and rocking those crowds. like king of the world man for however long just sitting up in that dj booth spinning everything in there hinges off of you you control every emotion you know what i'm saying and you're you're either gonna make or break that venue <laughs> you know what i'm saying if everything goes right accolades by you you know that's what's up but when it goes wrong shit <laughs> the shit hits the fan and it flies everywhere and smacks you right in the face and it's all on you i don't care what happened if it gets messed up, it's all on you. You're the DJ, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, um, I love that, you know, meeting new people. And of course, the money. checks come in and you're like hell yeah you know you, you know you're walking around with big bands of money in your pocket you know it's it's fun man it's really fun and you know 
you're the DJ. Everybody's recognizing you and knowing you as such. You're the DJ. That's it's a dope feeling, man. It really is. You know, great. Anybody who says they don't like the buddy is a liar. <laughs> You're not doing it for free, man. You're standing up there for a while, DJ and upset. So anybody that gets up there and says, Oh, I'm just doing it for the love of it, that dude's lying. <laughs> Straight up. He's either lying or he's a fool. You got you definitely, definitely gotta get compensated for what you're doing and the money is good, man. It really is. And you meet good people. You know, you meet you meet a lot of good people. You meet a lot of good people and you develop relationships with a lot of them. I told y'all y'all gonna see him again, right? It's my brother right here. We at the wedding right now. Yes, sir. Look, 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 show him the ring. Show him the ring. Show him the ring. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Especially the ones who have like annual things that they do every year, and you come back year after year and doing this stuff with them. Eventually, you become friends with them. You know, you build a rapport with with a lot of your clients, and it's not just. Hey, you know, come DJ this for me. You know, it's what up? Haven't talked to you in a while. What's going on? Or, you know, I saw your video or I saw you at the club. I didn't know you were DJing at this club, but I saw you there. You know what I'm saying? I saw your name, you know, headline on the joint. So we came in. You know, it's it's good, man. You know, it's it's really cool. It's a good feeling, man. You know, people hit you up on Twitter, you know, hit you up on, you know, Instagram and all these things, you know, and they're like, yo, I like that set you did the other night. I saw you at club, blah, 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 blah. Or one of the clients you had tweets up there, this, you know, this DJ right here is dope. He did my wedding or he did, you know, my birthday party or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. You know, it's, it's a good feeling. The worst part about DJing for me is being away from my family. Rather, I don't care if it's a week, I don't care if it's a day, I don't care if it's just a few hours. I hate being away from them sometimes, you know what I'm saying? When you're DJing, it can get, it can get, you know, you can feel, you know, closed in because it's just you. You don't know all these people that you're DJing for. Of course you have fun with them. You know, everybody's having a good time. You're mingling with people and everything and you're providing good service, good music. But at the same time, you know, I'm looking down at that screen Know, on my computer and I'm looking at my kids picture and I'm like damn you know, I wonder what they're doing right now you know or my lady shoots me a text you know they're walking around daddy 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 you know it kind of you know hits you right here it's like, damn you start to miss them when they get home you know um yeah that that that's one of the bad parts you know outside of money issue shit Rather, if it's DJs trying to take undercut you and take clients from you, or that one client who agreed to us price, and all of a sudden they want to change it, and you, know, you go through this stuff, man. You sometimes you just want to choke their asses, you know. But you must remain professional at all times. And um, uh, yeah, that's 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 a definite definite downside to it. <laughs> it really is. Or one of those, you know, incidents where you have to, you, know, you agree to something, all of a sudden the day got changed, and you're like, damn, man, I could have did this other thing, they hit me the same day, and damn, they canceled, I could have got that check, but damn, you know, it's a part of business that happens, you know, you're gonna take losses somewhere, you know, but those are like some of the worst parts about it, man, and even, I love all the venues that I do, but I have been to a few to where shit got out of control, and it's like, oh, shit what am i what the hell am i doing here <laughs> producing music producing music you know is also a love of mine um uh, i love making beats and i'm vicious at it i mean i got i got a healthy catalog i got stuff that i made dr dre jump back like whoo oh you know, this little dude yeah <laughs> i better get in the lab and start you know working on my shit you know i'm dope I'm um, have my own style of production, you know what I'm saying? My production company, um, Block Rocker Beats. Um, I'm working on projects right now. A um, couple of, you know, I guess you would still call them mixed CDs, even though people are buying CDs as mixed downloads, damn it. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. I'm working on three projects. Um, one of the projects that I'm working on uh, is a. Uh, the real rap series the real rap series exactly what it is real rap you know you gotta be a spitter to be on macho you can't be no tight pants wearing ronald mcdonald red hair looking weirdo you can't do that with me i would never even i wouldn't nah this would i wouldn't even look at you twice you know what i'm saying 
if all you can talk about is drugs, killing people, crack, fucking bras, money, you can't even, nah, we can't, we can't even breathe the same air. Um, though I have other projects for that, but the real rap series, nah, the real rap series, you know, it's, you gotta come with it. Um, and the first project that's coming out is The Greatest Disses. You're gonna hear everything from the, the old school disses from your Kumo D, Busy B era, on up to your Kumo D, the LL Cool J era, to NWA, Ice Cube, No Vaseline era, to your Tupac, hit him up, on to Gilly, the Cannon, on to yeah, Nas, Jay Z, to Game, and Cheat. It's gonna be all of that, man. It's, it's gonna be dope, man. And I think the best part about it is that people are gonna get the whole history of it uh, all on one mix, one CD, you know, or one download, one stream, however you however you hear it, however you get it. Um, and uh, it will also, this generation coming behind us will also, you know, have that as that reminder of where this came from, how this started, how, was, how much has evolved and how far it's come, you know. So I think, you know, it's a good thing all rolled into one big mix, man. The second project is uh, the Trap Stars. Uh, Trap Stars is pretty much what it is. It's gonna consist of like, you know, your Young Jeezy's, your Nipsey Hustles, um, Game, Blue Da Vinci, Big Out the Blue Da Vinci, Switch Gang, um, your AR Abs, you know what I'm saying? Um, Tobias Tate, Calico Jones, all these dudes are gonna be on there, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's gonna be dope. The other project is a uh, real rap, and it's we titled it Trash Day. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be volume three. It's Trash Day. When you see the cover, it'll explain it for itself. It, I'm expecting a backlash for it from it, you know. But as I said, you know, I know a lot of DJs have reputations for being soft. I'm not no soft sucker ass dude. Believe that. So when you approach me, approach me strong. Don't approach me wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because you might, you know, get something you're not looking for. DJ Envy. Envy inspires me on a whole nother level. Envy inspires me to want to make this not only just, you know, something that I want to be a part of, but make it a business and treat it as such you know i remember the first time i heard of dj envy is when i bought the block party um mix cd and i od'd on it i od'd on it from start to finish you know i know every song on it um it opened up with the jay-z oh yeah yeah dj envy block party you know what i'm saying um so he inspired me on a whole lot of levels, man, and it rocked. And I was like, you know, damn, that's a that's dope way he put it together. His style was different from Clues, to which he was on Desert Storm with Clue, I believe, at that time. And um, DJ Clue at that time was like the top dog, you know, between him and Ron G, they was just crushing out the mixtape game, you know, but they inspired me on a lot of levels. Um, DJ Scratch, like, you know, he's a phenom. He inspires me on a lot of levels. Um, you cannot even mention DJs and not mention K Slay. DJ K Slay the drama king. You know what I'm saying? Crazy mixtapes, all of them dope. Um Funk Master Flex, you know what I'm saying? DJ Flex at WPGC. Cosmic Kev, you know what I mean? These dudes they're interviewing rappers, they're going around, you know, doing their thing. Um my sister, my sister, uh Priscilla, her DJ name was DL. She worked for the Wiz in uh South Carolina. I'm, she's going everywhere, kicking it with Master P, kicking it with Trina. She's doing all these things, and then she got the Def Jam jacket. And I'm like, damn, they send her all kinds of stuff. Like you doing, like you really doing the thing, man. And she inspired me a lot too, a lot. Um, other inspirations, you know, that I, people have been inspired by. I've been inspired by the EDM scene as well. You know, hip hop evolves, DJing evolves. Break dancing evolves, crump dancing, and all these other things. So everything evolves. You know, I don't knock those guys. I like a lot of those guys. Um, my number one, you know, Skrillex. Skrillex is dope to me. You know, the dubstep scene. 
which all of it comes from hip hop. All of it. All of it. Dubstep, all of it. Um, trap, um, uh, EDM, all of it comes from hip hop, R&B, all of it. And I dig that they have taken it and turned it into something else. That's what hip hop is for. That's what music is for, is to be given to all cultures and, you know, to evolve and make it become something else. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes it so special. And, you know, I like them dudes, you know, Skrillex, like I said, um, Van Buren is dope. Uh, then you got your legends, Tiesto, David Guetta, who were dope. You know what I'm saying? Um, Steve Aoki, I think I said his name right. He's dope. You know, I like him. Um, uh, then you have, uh, um, what is it? Uh, Swedish House Mafia. Love them. Um, you know, it, it goes on and on, man. You know, it's a dead mouse. The list just goes on. Dope DJs that are doing their thing, man. And I like to see that the game has evolved into something else. You know, I like those dudes, too. I produce EDM music. I produce, you know, dubstep as well, you know. So I'm, I'm a DJ, so I'm open to everything. What makes it bad is when you're locked into one thing and you don't pay homage to where it came from. That's a problem for me. Now, that shit I don't like. Always pay the homage and give the homage to where it came from. Just like with hip-hop, you got to pay respect to the legends. You can't be like some of these little disrespectful idiots right now and just act like, you know, you know, particularly one of the things like the Soldier Boy thing, you know, oh, fuck the OGs, fuck guys. You can never say fuck the OGs. You can never say fuck guys T because if it wasn't for them, there would be no you, period. So I can never respect them on that level, ever. Um, and five years from now, will they be talking about you? They'll be talking about IC forever. They still are. That man came out like, ooh, a long time ago and he's still here. Regardless of what he's doing, and his music will live on forever. Can you say that your music will live on forever? See what I'm saying? Can you say that your mix CDs will live on forever? Boom, failure. I don't believe in failures. You know what I'm saying? Because the only time you fail is when you don't try. The only time you fail is when you fall and you don't have the heart to get back up. You know what I'm saying? I've fallen many times and I've gotten up. Um, one of my, I guess my falls, uh, we started a couple of companies, we started Toxic Entertainment, um, which branched off into Toxic TV, and then we had um, Impact Events, which branched off to um, Impact Productions as well. Impact, we spread it ourselves really thin. It was about bringing DJs together and having DJs working all across the United States. You know, it fell, but we're rebuilding it and it's, it's becoming what it needs to be because we're taking our time now and doing it. We're so excited at what we're doing and the success that was coming along with it, rushed it, and, and we tripped over our own feet. You know, we fell flat on our noses, but, you know, we, we're back up and we're making it become what it needs to be. And it's going to become what it needs to be. So failure is not an option at all. The only, like I said, the only time you fail is when you don't try or when you fall and don't get back up. Um, so all my my DJs that I dealt with, I'm definitely going to get back with them. Definitely, I'm definitely going to you know get everybody back to where they you know they need to be and where I said that I would get them, and I'm going to achieve that. Um, I'm going to achieve that. My downtime. My downtime, my downtime, you know, for one, I like to be in the gym. <laughs> I love being in the gym, man. Lifting weights and, you know, taking care of yourself and staying healthy, you know, is key to everything. You know what I'm saying? If you're not healthy and you're not good to your body, it won't be good to you. You won't be able to do a lot of things that you love doing. That's just about to dry. Um, outside of that, you know, I like to spend time with my family, my lady, my kids. Um, you know, talk to my parents, whether I'm Skyping with them or, you know, talking to them on the phone, you know, hanging out with you know, my, my people, my homies, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and just kicking it, man. Just having fun, man. Just, you got to have fun in life. Everything can't be business all the time. What's up, y'all? I'm on my chilling today, man. It's a holiday and I'm relaxing. This nigga gay and shit. Got the Heineken. 
that dude. He likes hair. He likes men with hairy backs. So. <laughs> You know what I mean? You sleep and shit. Hey, Tom. <laughs> Tom, we got all. Hey, this... ah, come on, man. Tom, come on, son. Come on. Get up, man. Right? If it ain't about the money, up, right? don't be waking on, me Tom. up because I ain't getting up. You, that, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All work and no play, but Jack a corny ass dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, that's just what it is. YouTube. I got into YouTube actually through my lady. My lady was into YouTube first. And she's like, you know, you need to do this. People are getting paid to do this. But I was always like, eh, I don't want to, you know, be involved in all that. And, you know, I'm a real private person. So I don't, you know, at that time, it was like, you know, I don't want to be, you know, the front guy. You know, I don't want to do that. You know, at one time I did, but wanted to be a rapper and stuff. But then you start to really realize how, open you are going to be so it's like nah i don't want to do that you know and then you know i tried it eventually she talked me into it and i tried it and it took off from there once i started you know getting the attention of people and i'm like well damn people are really watching my videos and they're commenting and all kinds of things they're hitting me on twitter and instagram i said like, okay you know let's do the damn thing and uh, you know it's becoming what it needs to be it's not exactly where it needs to be but it's going and i'm having fun with it and, you know, it's great. You know, I'm meeting people online that I otherwise would have never met before. You know, it's cool. Um, I've had a few encounters in the mall where, you know, people have stopped me. Hey, I know you. You're that DJ dude. I've seen you. I, I, or I follow you. Or if I'm DJing in the club, somebody will say, like, hey, you know, I follow you. And I'm like, oh, cool. That's dope. You know, it, it's cool, man. It's, it's really cool. You know, so I got into the whole, you know, the YouTube thing. There's other DJs out there doing it, also doing that YouTube thing, you know which is cool, you know, I don't knock nobody, you know, because I wouldn't want anybody to knock me. Final statement. Uh, my final statement is probably going to always be the same as it usually is in my YouTube video. Practice, 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 practice. On my mixtape DJs, keep making music, keep cranking out music, keep breaking records, keep this thing going, keep hip-hop alive. It's always the same statement. <laughs> Better probably never change. I live by that. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm DJ LX Star. You are watching Toxic TV. You already know my model, man. Deuces. <laughs>